UFOs and how to calculate the odds that an alien spaceship has been sighted. This is a UFO USO taken from uh, in the Arctic from uh, the USS Traband. And uh, this, of course, was an unidentified flying object leaving the ocean and flying in uh, supersonic speeds like the speeds of a shooting star into space and disappearing. Now, this is by Anders Sandberg, James Martin Research Fellow at the Oxford Martin School of University of Oxford in the UK. This is on the conversation. The US military has released previously classified photos and films related to unidentified flying objects, UFO sightings, which mostly show something blurry moving strangely. Still, I hear that a friend of a friend has gone from thinking there's a 1% chance that UFOs are aliens to now believing it is 50% and more. But is he rational? People are constantly seeing things in the sky they don't understand. The vast majority are airplanes, satellites, weather balloons, clouds, rocket launches, auroras, optical reflections, and uh, even some saying that it's uh, uh, ball lightning from uh, earthquake lights. Now, for some sightings, there's no known explanation. The problem is that people jump to the conclusions unknown equals aliens. And when you think about it, this is fairly odd. Why not angels? This is what Andrew Sandberg says. Anyway, I like to do maths instead. The Bayes formula, a mainstay of statistics, gives a probability PR of something given some evidence. PR, UFO is aliens evidence equals PR evidence slash UFO aliens times PR there are aliens divided by PR evidence. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Spelling it out, it says that the probability that UFOs are aliens, given some evidence, is equal to how likely it is that the evidence would appear if UFOs really were aliens, times how likely it is that there are aliens. That needs to be divided by how likely the actual evidence is, which is notoriously difficult to work out. But what we're really interested in is if the evidence tells us we should believe in aliens compared to not believing in aliens, we can do this by dividing the question above with the counterpart for UFOs not being aliens. Okay, so he's, uh, he's working with statistics. Uh, I, for one, when I was 12 years old, did see a UFO in Montreal, Canada, at a time where UFO sightings were very prevalent in the area of Quebec where I was living in Montreal. And uh, I really believe, by process of elimination, that it was definitely a UFO. But anyway, uh, just once is enough to know. Uh, anyway, when he says, when we do this, we get rid of risk of that pesky factor of how, for how probable the evidence is. The equation now shows us how likely it is that UFOs are aliens compared to how likely it is that they are not, after looking at the footage. The result will be one if the options are equally likely and high if aliens are the stronger bet. It tells us how we should update our beliefs based on new evidence. There are two factors in the equation. How likely we think aliens are. Some might say 50-50, making this factor 1, while others may make it very low, like 10 to the minus 23. This is a statement of belief based on knowledge of the world using, for example, the famous Drake equation. It needs to be multiplied by another factor, often called the base factor. It denotes how scientific the evidence we see is for aliens versus no aliens. If I met a little green blob claiming to be from Epsilon Eridani, that is relatively specific, but could still somewhat be explained by a prank or me being mad, in this case, the factor may be much bigger than I, and I get to shift towards thinking there are aliens. If I see a mysterious blob of light in the sky that could be aliens but could also be a lot of other things, then the factor would not be much different from one 
the evidence is as specific for aliens as it is for no aliens, and I didn't get much change in belief. In other words, specificity is hugely important. Weird and unknown things may happen, but if the lights, lights could equally well be fairies, intrusions from the fifth dimension, swamp gas, Chinese drones, sapient octopuses, or anything else, the base factor will still be close to one. That the world is strange is not evidence for aliens. My verdict, he says, the latest UFO revelations from the US government does not make me update in the direction of aliens much. Sure, there is lots of weird footage, but it could be explained by many other things. There are no green blobs demanding to be taken to our leader. There's not even a photo of an alien, given that earlier research also made me, has made me think the universe is pretty empty. I end up with a very low personal probability estimate of UFOs being aliens. Here's my calculation. I start with assuming that aliens visiting is pretty unlikely. I place it somewhere around one in a billion. Why? Because I think the probability of intelligent life per planet is really low, and if that were uh, any, uh, if there were any out there, it would probably spread on a cosmic scale. Indeed, that we've been paved over already is an important piece of evidence. As for the specificity of the evidence, I accept that weird things show up but none of it looks particular for aliens. So my base factor is at best two or so, and I think that is too much actually. So I end up giving a one in 500 million chance to UFOs being aliens after looking at the footage. One should, however, consider it, recognize that great uncertainty here, that one in a billion estimate is based on arguments that could be wrong and are debatable. Now, imagine I see every TV channel showing footage of a green blob demanding an audience with the UN Secretary General. If it was a real alien, the probability of the footage would be one. But the probability is that it is a super elaborate prank or that I had a psychotic break may, is maybe one in a thousand. Psychosis is far more common than many think. So by dividing one by a thousand, I would get the base factor of a thousand, boosting my estimate by a factor of a thousand. When I mu then multiply that per the equation by the one in the billion probability of aliens visiting, I get a total probability of one in two in a million. This would not be enough to think it must be real, but it would be alarming enough to check if my friends are seeing the same thing. Surely they can't all go mad at the same time. That would be even less likely. If they agree, I would boost my estimate by a few more orders of magnitude to maybe one in 10, I would also check for evidence that it is not a super prank. As for the current evidence, what would convince me otherwise? More specific evidence, not just blurry lights moving apparently fast. Science did not believe in meteorites until trustworthy multiple witnesses brought in rocks found to be unknown minerals, a good base factor, and our understanding of the solar system allowed for asteroids. I suspect actual evidence for visits from extraterrestrial intelligence will be hard to miss. Trying to explain away the weakness of current evidence as aliens being cleverly stealthy does not make them more likely since it makes the evidence unspecific. The search will no doubt go on, but we should look for specific things, not blurry ones. Yes, of course, uh, yes, why do we have blurry images? That's one good question. We should have more evidence. That's uh, assuming that they will declassify it. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. This is from the conversation.